Welcome. Let's take a look at what we call a semi-hollow sphere. So this would be a full sphere, except it has a cavity of radius r in the center. So we have a charge density between r and 2r, which we can represent on this graph. We have no charge density inside this cavity, and of course we have no charge density outside the cavity. We want to find the electric field at all space. First we want to use some of our symmetry arguments. So looking at our symmetry, we can tell that this is spherically symmetric, right? Both of our spheres are on top of each other. So this means that E is a function of R, right? or E is proportional to R in some way, so that we can say that E is then a function of R. And then we know that our E vector is in the r hat direction. So right, what this combines to us is that we know that our electric field is a function of r in the r hat direction. So we can then draw our electric field. We know it will be in this way. So we want to have a Gaussian surface that goes with that such that its area will be parallel to our electric field. So we want to choose spheres ourselves, so we're choosing spherical Gaussian surfaces. One nice thing about drawing a charge density versus distance graph is it tells us how many regions, right, the different functions are, so it tells us how many Gaussian surfaces we need to draw. So I need to draw a Gaussian surface for this region, so it would look like a Gaussian sphere here. I need to draw a Gaussian surface for this region. It would look like a Gaussian surface here. And for this region, it should look like a Gaussian surface here. So we can see, hopefully fairly nicely, that our electric field and the dA for our surfaces are going to be right parallel, so that E dot dA is not going to be much of a problem. So the first thing we can do is we can kind of separate our Gauss's law into left-hand side and a little bit later right-hand side. So on our left-hand side we have that the closed integral of e dot dA is equal to the sum of all the faces. Now with a sphere, we can treat the entire face of the sphere as one face. And then we know that we have, right, our electric field in the radial direction as a function of r, and then we have just dA. Now we've proven, right, that we don't need to worry about the dot product because these two are parallel, so that's always nice. And then our electric field is a function of r, but as we integrate along this spherical shell in any of these three regions, we do not change our radius. So we can pull the electric field out, and then we just have the integral of dA of the sphere. So we get the electric field in the radial direction times 4 pi r squared. And this is going to be for all three regions. For our right-hand side, we're going to have a little bit more to go on. First off, for the inside, the cavity, our Q enclosed over epsilon naught is equal to the integral of rho dV over epsilon naught. And so we are just going from 0 to little r. And our charge density while we're in this region is zero. So we have zero dV over epsilon naught is zero. So we have, right, Q enclosed over epsilon naught for 
inside, or we can call region one. So that's inside the cavity. Then we can look inside the sphere. Inside the sphere, we still have Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Is the integral of rho dv over epsilon naught. But now we write start at zero, and we go through this whole cavity region. So we have to have a first integral that goes from zero to r with a charge density of zero. Plus, then we have an integral from r, the inner workings of the cavity, to the end of our Gaussian surface. So from capital R to big R to little r of our charge density rho dv over epsilon naught. So then we get that our Q enclosed over epsilon naught. We hopefully feel good that this is zero. And then our rho we can pull out. So then we get the volume as a function of little r minus volume as a function of capital R over epsilon naught or rho times four thirds pi little r cubed minus four thirds pi big R cubed over epsilon naught. And then this is for right region two. And we have lastly outside the sphere. The charge enclosed is not zero, right, even though the charge density is zero because we're enclosing all the charge into here. And so then we get the integral first from zero to r of zero dv, not too interesting, plus the integral from r to two r of rho dv, plus the integral from two r to wherever this Gaussian surface ends at little r, of the charge density zero. I'm going to divide all this by epsilon naught. So nicely enough, right, this region zero, this region zero, and so then our Q enclosed over epsilon naught, we can pull the rho out. So we have rho V of two R minus V of R over epsilon naught. And so we get then that we get rho times four thirds pi two r cubed, so that's eight r cubed minus rho four thirds pi r cubed over epsilon naught. So we get our charge enclosed over epsilon naught is rho times four thirds pi. 7 r cubed over epsilon naught for this region. So now we can do with Gaussian surfaces, right, Gauss's law. We've solved the left hand side, we've solved the right hand side for each of these. So, nicely enough for the uh, inside surface, we have e sub r times 4 pi r squared equals 0. So, e equals 0 for region one. For here, a little bit tougher, so we'll talk about it right here. So we have e sub r times four pi r squared is equal to my q enclosed over epsilon naught. So I can factor out the four thirds pi just to make my life that tiny much easier. We've got the epsilon naught here and we can factor out the rho. So then I just have r to the third minus capital R to the third. And then I can do a tiny bit of canceling out. Four pi, four pi. And so I get the my electric field as a function of r is gonna be rho over three epsilon naught r to the third minus capital R to the third over r squared in the r hat direction. 
Central Region 2. And lastly here we have that, right, still using this, our electric field in the radial direction, 4 pi r squared, is equal to my q enclosed over epsilon naught, rho 4 thirds pi 7 capital R cubed over epsilon naught. Luckily enough, we get a little bit of cancellation and a lot less passing than this, 4, 4, pi, pi. So we get rho 7, capital R to the third power, over 3 epsilon naught R squared. Do I have direction? So we've run out of time and space, but right, we would have an electric field of zero up until r. We would have an electric field where right, r to the third over r squared would be roughly linear, and then we'd have one over r squared, right, inverse, uh, inverse square after two r for what the electric field would look like.